I get a lawyer, I prepare the paperwork, and I even hire a guy to be on standby to serve her. D-Day arrives. She lies and tells me she has to work overtime. I drive to the hotel and wait for her to arrive. Me and the guy I hired to serve her go up about 10 minutes after she gets into the elevator. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story. This was emailed to me. Um, I don't know if, if the person who emailed this to me, if this is your actual story on Reddit, but um, I believe it is. I, I'm pretty sure it is, but he didn't, he didn't really say. Um, if you want to say something in the comments, you want to clarify some things, um, you can do so or if you want to re remain anonymous, that's fine also And you can just write me back if you see any comments that you feel like you need to clarify or you want to answer any questions But we're gonna head over to his reddit post which is recent and Let's go ahead and get into it. So Five days since I served my soon-to-be ex-wife 30 year old female of seven years now everyone is piling on me to talk to her. He starts with, I've made a decision to go NC after serving my wife five days ago. I am refusing to see or talk to her. Her and everyone else is piling on me to talk to her. It's driving me nutty. Messages and calls 24 seven. What can I say to these people to get them to back off without being rude? These are my friends, family, people I want to remain in contact with after divorce is finalized. Some background. We dated from the age of 20 and married when she became pregnant with our son. Our marriage was great. We got another kid, a daughter, two years after the first and have had excellent intimacy, good communication, good finances. We owned our house. We had a cat. Kids are well balanced and doing well. We were happy. Or so I thought. Then about four months ago, my wife, let's just call her Sue, came home from working, gushing about this new manager they got. Let's call him Frank. I felt uneasy right away, like something was off. I smiled and I was asking a few questions, like if he was married, did he have kids, where did he live, etc. She tells me he is on his second marriage and have four kids in total. Now, I was thinking this was probably a crush. I have had those, but they usually pass. So I decided to just wait. It would probably just go away. Over the next week, this would happen every day, and I got more and more uneasy. I decided I needed to see if something more was going on. So I told Sue I got a virus alert on the home network and that I needed to update the virus software on her pad, her mobile, and her laptop. She has no IT skills whatsoever. So she gave me her equipment and I installed remote monitoring software and key logging from the best online service I could find. Best $20 a month subscription I ever got. A few days later, I saw the first text messages going back and forth between them. They were pretty innocent though, mostly work related. Still the frequency escalates a little over the next four to six weeks and gets more personal. I do a soft confrontation with my wife. She comes home from work and I stare at her intensely. Sue, what is wrong? Me, have you crashed a car or something? Sue, what? No. Me, you look like you have done something wrong and you are trying to hide it. Sue, no, I am not. What are you talking about? Me, you look guilty of something. Are you lying to me? Is there something you need to tell me? Sue. No, I just had a long day at work, blah, blah, blah. The next few days, there was fewer messages between them, but they are quickly back at it in full force. The messages started to get flirty. I softly confront her again. Again, she lies to my face. I decide this will probably end badly at around the second month mark, and I decide to prepare for the worst. I also start to prepare myself emotionally. Over the next two months, their exchanges evolve into a full-blown emotional affair, and it's getting more and more sexual. I confront my wife repeatedly. I don't present any evidence. She just keeps lying. 
I am not going to force her to stop. After all, she is a grown woman and she makes her own choices. She lies to my face again and again. I feel a gigantic rift opening up between us. Intimacy also stops. I find I am checking out of the marriage in parallel with their activities. I am devastated but working out a lot and preparing myself for the reality that the only likely outcome at this point is divorce. I get a lawyer, I prepare the paperwork, and I even hire a guy to be on standby to serve her if and when I decide to pull the cord. Then I see the first messages where they plan to meet up. I am actually relieved since I can finally decide to end it. Just watching this train wreck unfold is agonizing. I rent a room on the same floor on the day they are planning to meet up and I get my guy ready to serve her in the hotel. D-Day arrives. She lies and tells me she has to work overtime. I drive to the hotel and wait for her to arrive. Me and the guy I hired to serve her go up about 10 minutes after she gets into the elevator and we go up to her floor. The elevator needed a key card. It is the only reason why I rented a room. We go to the door. I hear moaning, so they are already at it. I hide around the corner and he bangs loudly on the door. They go quiet. Frank, what is it? Serving guy. I have an urgent delivery for Sue. Sue, what is it? Serving guy. I don't know, ma'am. I have just been told it's urgent. It has to be delivered to you right now. And after some more back and forth, the wife finally opens the door in a robe. Serving guy. Are you Sue? Wife. Yes. She gets the envelope and I pop out to sign the form. My wife sees me and just goes white. I sign the papers and I need to sign and walk over to her. She doesn't move. I don't know what is going on with her. She looks confused to say the least. Like what she is seeing doesn't compute. I had prepared for this moment. I look into the room. Me. Hey Frank, show yourself. I know you are in there. He looks around the corner and is obviously scared. Did you enjoy my wife Frank? Or is it lying to your own wife that gets you off? Or is it having several mistresses at once Frank? Is it lying and cheating on everyone? Is that it? Frank, silence. Then I look at my wife. Me, Sue, you didn't really think you were the only side chick this guy had, did you? You are one of three, as far as I know. Guys, I just made this up. I have no idea if, she, if he has other mistresses than my wife. I just needed to be mean and ruin what they had going on. Sue, listen to me. You are single now, so don't let me disturb anymore. You can go back to continue your activities. Then I stormed off. I started crying, but I wasn't going to let them see that. So I ran down the stairs instead of waiting for the elevator. On my way, I heard this primal scream from my wife that was unlike anything I had ever heard before. I took a lot of solace in that scream the last few days. I got in my car and I ugly cried for hours. Now I am mostly over it. I'm glad it's done. I can move on. I feel liberated, actually. I told the kids they are staying with my parents for now. I even started to flirt with a work colleague and I've got on Tinder. I am chatting with a few women and it's a great boost for my ego. I am not looking for anything physical or serious. I will probably never trust anyone enough to have long term relationships again anyway. I haven't talked to my wife since. She floods me with messages that I just ignore. But everyone is calling me and trying to guilt trip me, pressure me into talking to her. I also have been thinking about telling Frank's wife. If I was her, I would want to know. And I don't think Frank will all of a sudden develop a spine and own up. Of course not. Edit. I have decided to tell the wife. I have called her and told her the key facts. She didn't believe me outright. So I am meeting her at a coffee shop within the hour. I have also started to ask the people that call me to ask her why I'm not talking to her. It seems to slow down the barrage. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. Damn, man, what a way to serve those papers in the hotel room. She's with the AP. I'm glad you jumped on it. You you're a little more patient. You're a little more patient than I am. You know, I don't think I would have waited that long. I would have hit her with the evidence and hit her with the papers ASAP. But hey, whatever. You got to it eventually. So salute to you. Um I, re I remember in the story you saying that uh, you, you ended up lying to her saying that, oh, you're not the only side chick. He has three. 
I can tell you right now, she doesn't even care. She doesn't care. If she's getting what she wants from him, which it sounds like sex and good sex from him, and that's what she wants, she don't care who he's, who he's screwing. She really doesn't care. So, um, I mean, that probably probably didn't hurt her like you think it did, but um, you do have updates and stuff. So we'll, we'll see what happened in the updates. But man, like I said, you definitely have some freaking patience. Like, you know, she's lying to you. You have this this software where you can see everything. You see her text messages, photos she's sending, whatever it is. You know, she's lying to your face and you're able to hold it in. S salute to you for that. I don't know how you were able to do it, but you did it. But you had that perfect opportunity. Oh, so they're going to be at the hotel. Boom, I'm going to serve her there. As long as you got the job done, it sounds like you got the job done, but you have some updates. So um, let's read. Let's check out these updates. Firstly, thank you, everyone, for your input. It helped me out a lot. I have managed to get rid of most callers. There are only a few stragglers left still trying to pressure me. I met with Frank's wife. More on that further down. The two best responses turned out to be. Why don't you ask her why we are not talking? This was very effective. Number two, follow up if number one didn't work. Imagine the trauma Sue has inflicted on me for me to go no contact. You pressuring me is adding a lot to my stress. Will you pay for my psychotherapy? If I have a total mental breakdown? No. Okay, maybe you should stay out of this then. Secondly, I think I need to clarify a little. Many seem to think that I had full control and executed a flawless maneuver. The entire day, apart from the 10 minutes when I confronted her, I was a total mess. It took me two months of stealing myself in preparation to be able to pull off the 10 minute confrontation. I was hoping she would turn around at the door and come back down. She had dozens of chances to stop and come clean, but she didn't. I guess I was hoping up until the last second that she had stopped. I would have been able to talk about reconciling up until the point where they got physical. Wow. It took everything I had not to break down in tears in the hotel. In fact, I started crying before I reached the end of the hallway. Also, I didn't do this as some kind of revenge. I did it to break free and regain a bit of my self-worth. Being cheated on was degrading, humiliating, emasculating. I am a shell of my former self. I do realize that this is because I loved her with all my heart and it's why I decided to go see. I don't think I am strong enough yet to face her without breaking down and I will never ever again show any weakness in front of her or anyone that might convey that to her. Asking the questions to Frank surprising and confronting my wife was all about me, not them. I took back control over my life. I will never again show her any kindness or consideration. And for her, I will be nothing but a rock hard, ice cold, emotionless, indifferent ex-husband. I will burn her and Frank's life to the ground once the divorce goes through. Until then, I will work on bettering myself and getting on with my life. F them. They can do whatever they want. I can't control their choices. I can only control my own. Many was asking how I can be this cold and calculated. I think a few even called me crazy. I don't see it like that. Let me be clear. I don't enjoy this at all. I see it as absolutely necessary actions for my own well-being and sanity. Life has changed. My marriage in this case developed gangrene, so I am cutting it off. I have also decided to not flirt or do anything on Tinder. It was a nice ego boost, but I am in a vulnerable state and I might cause someone else pain since I am not really in control of my emotions at this point. It would be selfish of me to expose anyone else to potential pain just to stroke my own ego. So I met with Frank's wife yesterday. We talked for hours at the coffee shop. She was devastated. She called Frank and confronted him with me next to her on screen. He begged, pleaded all the usual stuff. She had been preparing for this as we talked, but still she broke down and just hung up on him in the end. She ended up spending the night in my new apartment in the spare room. She just couldn't go home and face him. We talked all night. It felt good to vent my anger with someone that understood what this betrayal feels like. I heard her crying herself to sleep last night. It was heartbreaking. I wanted to go and hug her, but I didn't want to make it weird or make her uncomfortable. I will ask her today if I can do anything to help. 
I have told her she can stay as long as she wants. Nobody knows about the apartment besides me. It's small and doesn't have a lot of furniture, but it has plenty of food and all the amenities you would need. She is trying to get her head on straight before facing Frank. Frank has been blowing up her phone with messages and apologies. When I left for work this morning, she still haven't responded to any of them. The only person I have talked to beyond message one and two is my wife's mother. I like her. She is very nice and she has always made me feel welcomed and cared for. She told me that my wife would be committed into a mental facility due to talking about terminal self-harm. She has been in a bad way apparently since the hotel. Wow. I told her she is no longer my responsibility. She made these choices. She will need to deal with the consequences. I would appreciate it if she didn't update me on my wife since it was already painful enough and that I needed distance to properly separate myself from her. I informed her that there is zero, absolutely zero percent chance of reconciliation. The divorce will go through. We will not communicate at all outside of issues related to our children. And that will all be done in writing. I have enough just dealing with myself at the moment. So I am not as strong as many seem to think. I managed to pull myself together just enough to cut the cord after two months of intense effort and I would probably devolve into sobbing mess if I met her today. I need time to heal and everyone calling prevented that. So thank you again Reddit for helping me fend off the well-meaning people that were injecting themselves into my relationship on my wife's behalf. You guys are awesome. Edit. I made a new update since so many people was asking for one. Before we go to his, his last update, let's check out a few comments here. Someone says, you got this. I know it's difficult, but just make sure you are eating healthy, getting sleep and exercise. He responded and said, thank you. Solid advice. Someone said, her threatening to delete herself is just manipulation. If she felt so strongly about your marriage, she wouldn't have cheated and withheld intimacy from her own husband. Stay strong. Do not cave in. Her life is not your responsibility anymore. You responded, I was thinking this might be the case as well. Someone said, NC, no contact is, is a smart move. Someone said, thanks for informing Frank's wife. You are a solid dude. Wow, yeah. Let's go ahead and check out his last update. Five days since I served my soon-to-be ex-wife. Five days since I served my soon-to-be ex-wife, who's 30 years old, of seven years. Now everyone is piling on me to talk to her. Thank you again, everyone, for all the support. I am sorry I won't be able to respond to everyone. It's been absolutely overwhelming. Seems like someone made a YouTube video or something and it went bananas. I have tried to read every suggestion and I have got a lot of new perspectives and suggestions to ponder. I find it very helpful. I feel a lot stronger now thanks to all of you Redditors. You are all absolutely freaking amazing. Taking time out of your day to help complete lost stranger on the internet. I bow my head in gratitude to you all. Anyway, a lot of people have asked me to do updates when things happen, so here it goes. My wife has been committed to a medical facility after a self-ending attempt. 27 stitches on her wrist, so it's pretty serious. Her mother told me. Surprisingly, she didn't ask me for anything. She just told me to let her know if she could... She just told me to let her know if she could be of any help. She is just awesome. I still haven't talked to my wife yet. I will talk to her when I am ready, not before, and I am not ready to face her yet. She is the mother of my children, and I want her to be healthy and be able to be a good mother to them, but I am not allowing this latest action on her part to change my, my current course. My wife knew very well that if she ever cheated that that would be an automatic and total deletion of our relationship. I gave her lots of opportunities to turn around. I have had plenty of opportunities to cheat over the years. Some while I have been stupid drunk and I have never ever acted on it. I have never ever flirted back. Even off my rockers, I knew the right thing to do. I have also had crushes. I understand that this is natural for everyone to have, but again, I have never acted on these. In fact, I have gone out of my way to stay out of contact long enough for the crush to pass. 
In my mind, there is no excuse or extenuating circumstances for my wife's choices and actions. I mean, if you kill someone while drunk driving, it's not an excuse that you were drunk. There is no other outcome than divorce. I don't want to listen to any excuses. My mind is set. Never be able to forgive her. So, so it's better to just get over it. It's the best solution for everyone, including for her. I know I said I wanted to burn it all to the ground, but I will probably not do this. This is a fantasy I played in my head because it felt good. Hurting her, getting her fired, etc. It would not benefit me or my children. It will probably just take me res it will probably it will probably just make me responsible for her upkeep and it will reflect back on my children if this becomes widespread knowledge. It's not a price I am willing to pay for some short term emotional gratification. So far I so far I only talk to my parents and my brother plus her mother. Her father passed last year. I will probably keep it like that even though vengeance is so incredibly tempting. Frank's wife is doing a lot better. We hug now when we cry. We are not romantically inclined towards each other at all. Stop suggesting we bang. To be honest, having the support of someone that is experiencing the same is just incredibly helpful, especially those times when it gets to be much to bear. My wife is the first and only person I have opened up to since childhood. Frank's wife is only the second. It's very hard for me to trust people to begin with. Now I find it damn near impossible. But somehow I managed to feel comfortable with Frank's wife. We make a lot of progress hidden away in the apartment, working and discussing through things. I actually went together with Frank's wife to see Frank today. That was kind of intense, but his behavior was kind of predictable in the end. Frank is, how can I phrase this in the kindest possible way? He is an absolute ish stain on humanity. I didn't say anything during the meeting. I was just there for the emotional support for my new friend. He was desperate. He promised everything and anything just for her to come back home. He spilled all the beans. Turns out I was right on my wife not being the only one. He has had four mistresses over the last 12 months and two before that. The first just the first just three months after they got married. Damn. He claims sex addiction. What the F? If he is like this, why not mention that before you get married? Or why get married at all? This guy is the weakest, slimiest piece of crap I have ever met, but maybe I am biased. I was scared I would knock his lights out before we met, but after I saw him, I just felt sorry for him. I don't really see him as an actual man, rather some perverted, poor imitation of one. That realization was surprisingly liberating. I will prepare to meet my wife probably next week. I will ask my father to join. I respect his opinion a lot, and he is very good at being impartial so so if i am unreasonable or if she is he will be able to call us out on it i don't want to sugarcoat anything or give any false hope we are done we will be divorced there is no chance at all to reconcile now we need to find a way to co-parent and coexist peacefully on the same planet i am scared that i will fold i really really hope i can suck it up for long enough and stay it and stay the course it really is the best option for everyone no need to drag it out I know the outcome already. I have been very fair in my suggested divorce agreement, 50-50 on everything, but now that she has broken down, I will suggest I get main custody for the time being. I have already made a plan with my parents to take over the day-to-day -day responsibility of the kids. I want to get my kids back in something as close to normal life as possible, as soon as possible. I have talked to CPS and they are very positive, so no issues there. I will also move back to our house towards the end of the week. Frank's wife will get to stay at the apartment for as long as she wants. And I also want to have a place I can escape to if I need it. Mm -hmm. So all in all, I am doing much better. A lot of it is thanks to you, wonderful people of Reddit. Once again, thank you. Wow, what a story. Guys, so it's, let me know what you think about this in the comments. You guys can check it out. I'll put the links in the description like usual. Let me know what you think about this one. Man. Wow. I'll catch you guys at the next one.